Now, is it just me, or are the inside linebackers from years gone by a lot more intimidating than the ones in today's game? Maybe it's because the position is becoming more and more athletic and littered with less and less downhill thumpers. How do you think guys like Chuck Bednarik, Ray Nitschke, Dick Butkus would react playing in today's NFL with all these new rules and, and these divas? Oh, these divas. It's awful. They may not survive. They thrive on intimidation. Luke Keekley is the top inside linebacker in the game today, and to me it's not really close. He and Bobby Wagner have always been paired together because Keekley was the ninth pick in the 2012 NFL Draft, while Wagner fell to the second round that year. Now, I've never ranked Wagner ahead of him, but it's always been a neck-and-neck -neck race, and I believe Keekley has taken such a huge, huge leap forward the last few seasons that He's the clear-cut number one. He's the best inside linebacker at both the run and the pass. There's nobody better at speeding and knifing through traffic to bring down running backs. Nobody can match his instincts and awareness. He's just so damn smart out there. In pass coverage, Keekley's footwork is incredible. He can turn and run with not only tight ends, but slot receivers as well. You just don't see that. And he's very fluid in his zone dropbacks. As a pass rusher, Keekley has the speed and timing to shoot the A-gap well, but he's asked to be in coverage more often than attack the quarterback. Navarro Bowman is number two. The guy suffered a gruesome ACL injury in the 2013 NFC Championship game, missed all of 2014, but was back to his old ways in 2015. He's as athletic and instinctive linebacker as there is. He's a great inside blitzer and outstanding chasing running backs down, running sideline to sideline. He might be the fer most ferocious hitting linebacker in the league. He's very smooth in coverage, quick in space. He can turn and run and change direction to cut off underneath routes. The aforementioned Wagner is number three. He's undersized, six feet, 240 pounds, but makes up for it with speed, instincts, and intensity. And although he's on the Seattle Seahawks, you know, a team that's gone to the Super Bowl twice now in the last couple years, he still tends to be underrated among the rest of that elite defense. His instincts, speed, agility, vision, body control, and great leverage makes him a stud against the run. He's very good at navigating through the trash before locating the ball quickly and taking down the ball carrier. In coverage, he's equally adept, especially in zone coverage. He gets great depth, will knock his receivers off their route if they cross the middle, and tackles well in space. His instincts and quickness help him reacting to what he sees, putting his feet into the ground and quickly close on the ball. Like Keekly, Wagner is counted on more in coverage than as a blitzer. Coming off an Achilles injury in 2014, Derek Johnson didn't appear to lose a step at all in 2015. I've got him at number four. He had missed just one game in four prior seasons leading up to 2014. At 6'3", 240, Johnson has the perfect frame for the position and is another one of those rare three-down linebackers. He can stop the run. He can rush the passer and drop back into coverage. He uses his fantastic speed and instincts in the run game and uses his ability to scoot to make plays along the perimeter. He also does a solid job of shooting gaps and getting into the backfield. He times his blitzes extremely well. He flushes the quarterback, creates opportunities for his outside rushers. His read and react skills and zone coverage are top-notch. He has smooth hips, great closing speed, Probably the second best coverage linebacker aside from Keekley. I've got the extremely underrated Jarrell Freeman at number five. He's a monster, and nobody knows it. He's at his best in run defense. He's strong and stout enough to hold his ground, but also has the agility to clear blockers before closing quickly on the ball. He's also a very short tackler, missing just five on the year. Freeman has really good speed, which helps him close in on the quarterback quickly when he's blitzing. He had three sacks four quarterback hits, and six hurries, which is solid for an inside linebacker. In coverage, Freeman does a solid job in space due to his closing speed against both tight ends and running backs. Dante Hightower is number six, like his teammate Jamie Collins. Hightower can play both inside or outside linebacker, excel in both a 4-3 and 3-4 scheme. He's at his best running downhill and laying the lumber in the hole. His reaction time is exceptional. As a pass rusher, he times his blitzes extremely well, and when he gets ahead of steam, he runs over the blitz protection. At 6'3", 270, you might assume that Hightower is too big 
to play good coverage, but that's not really the case. He can hold his own. He uses his power to redirect tight ends and moves quicker than you might think in space. Nobody is ever going to replace Ray Lewis in Baltimore, but C.J. Mosley has been outstanding over his first two years so far. He's number seven. Coming off a phenomenal rookie season, Mosley backed it up with a solid sophomore campaign. Mosley's run defense is his best asset, and his tackling is among the best out of all the inside linebackers. He plays with great anticipation, has a high football IQ. He stacks up blockers, he sheds them, finds the ball always takes the proper angle to the ball carrier. Mosley's pass coverage is solid as well. Again, it's his, it's about his instincts and football IQ. He really, really trusts his eyes. Danny Trevathan checks in at number eight. He's a perfect fit for this new era of linebacker, which is athletic and fast. Again, like I said in the beginning, we're not seeing as many downhill thumpers these days. Trevathan has a great ability to get into the backfield consistently and make what they call splash plays. He can also stack and shed blockers as well. He's very good in pass coverage. He can turn and run with both tight ends and running backs and plays the zone well because of his instincts and closing speed on the ball. His awareness is top-notch. Although Trevathan didn't post a sack last year, he's able to get into the gaps and flush the quarterback. Lawrence Timmons is number nine, simply a tackling machine, posting his fifth straight 100-plus tackle campaign a year ago. At 6'1", 234, he's undersized, but again, you know, going back to this, what is undersized anymore? He plays with great quickness, really lays the lumber. He's very athletic, is a top-notch run defender. He anticipates, gets in position, and closes quickly. As great as Timmons is as a run defender, his ability and coverage does need a little bit of improvement. He gets targeted a lot, uh, struggles in space when it comes to pass coverage. As a pass rusher, he's not asked to do it much, but he has shown in the past that he's capable. Rounding out my top 10 is Brandon Marshall. The guy does a little bit of everything. He's both strong and athletic, which helps him a lot in the run game. He can thump and has the speed to chase down a ball carrier from behind. Marshall is at his best in coverage. He literally takes away the middle of the field. He also does a stellar job with tight ends down the seams. Some other guys on my list. There's Dion Buchanan at number 14, Avery Williamson at number 16, Preston Brown at number 20, Josh Maga at number 26, Vincent Ray at 27, and Vince Williams at 32. Buchanan, like Mark Barron, seamlessly made the transition from safety to linebacker, and with the way the game's changing, both have thrived in their new roles. Williamson is stuck in Tennessee, so people may not know him around the country, but don't sleep on him. Very, very solid player. Bernardrick McKinney comes off a very solid rookie season playing with Houston. He and Brian Cushing make a solid pair in the middle. Maga plays alongside Johnson, but he's very underrated. And then there's Ray, who has always been overshadowed in Cincinnati because he doesn't start. But he's a really solid player, and quite frankly, he's got starter potential. Shazier and Timmons are the starters in Pittsburgh, but Shazier is known to get hurt, and Williams did a really, really nice job filling in for him last year. As for the Eagles, I've got Jordan Hicks at number 15, and if he can repeat what he did his first eight games last year, he'll be in my top 10 next year. Hicks is a stud in the making. I'm telling you guys, watch out for him this year. All right, that's my list. Uh, let me know in the comments section, whether you're watching this on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, whatever realm it is. Let me know who your top five guys are, your top ten, who's overrated, who's underrated. Let me know. I'm Adrian Fedq. I am out. Later.